Good morning and welcome back to the Church of the Tone Priest. Tone Priest is doing a little uh, laboratory experiment here. Got some big projects coming up. This is uh, my little breadboard setup I made. I think I cut out a piece of metal from a uh, lid of a old VCR or something that I, I got out of the uh, landlord's junk pile and uh, made this little gizmo here. You know, got your input and output jack, your 9-volt uh, uh, plug here, and then three holes for uh, potentiometers. And uh, we can do some experimentation, which we are doing. we got some big projects coming up, folks. I'm super excited. Anyway, got some big projects coming up. We're making some uh, super-duper pedals, uh, boost and overdrive, all in one package. i got uh, two projects in mind. But uh, you'll have to come back to see what they are. Can't wait. And then we got this thing for the uh, the Univibe clone type thing. Or it's not going to be Univibe. It's a uh, going to be an Aquanaut clone. So we're just doing a little experimentation. Uh, I don't want to make exact clones. I want to make improvements on existing uh, stuff. Messing around with this guy here. But uh, yeah, we'll save all that for the, the video when they happen. Wanted to give a shout out to the Josh Gilbert Band. I stumbled upon uh, this channel yesterday, and uh, yeah, super cool channel. Josh uh, does equipment demos, has guitar lessons, and uh, live stuff from his band. And here's the trio here, jamming away, and they do an awesome rendition of uh, "Fly Like an Eagle" by the Steve Miller Band. So uh, give them a check out, or is that how you say it? Give them a check out. Check them out. Go give them a check them out. Uh, super cool. This guy, uh, unbelievable. He's like a looper master. He's starting the song, he gets a loop going, and then he's singing, and he's tuning up his guitar all at the same time. I can't even, well, I can barely even play guitar, but uh, I can't play guitar and chew gum at the same time. But uh, yeah, super cool rendition of this song. Check him out. Good stuff. All right, so anyway, today's project is... Uh, Hopefully we're going to get the uh, strangest amp or the weirdest amp that Retro ever played. Get that all fired up and running. All the parts are here. So uh, Tone Priest is going to make himself a coffee. And uh, yeah, hopefully finish this sucker up. So uh, if that sounds interesting to you, I'm not sure why it would. But if it does, hang tight. Oh, God. Whew. All right, we got the action cam set up. We got ourselves a uh, freshly brewed cup of uh, coffee here. Nice Ethiopian bean. Um, yeah, guys, there's no reason to be drinking Maxwell House. Just stop it with that. I think I got this stuff from Trader Joe's. It's not expensive. So, uh, seriously, step it up. Anywho, um, so... What we got going on today, if you missed part one, part one was just kind of an intro. You should probably check that video out so, uh, you know, the Retschul uh, reference doesn't seem like total clickbait. Uh, well, it kind of is. But anyway, you should check it out anyway. Uh, part two, we started uh, servicing the amp. Uh, we pulled the board, this board here. I believe this is mainly the power uh, supply section, but it could be wrong. Um, placing caps, um, we learned that the Tone Priest's Shopping skills are subpar, and so we had to, so we had it, so we had to make another order, and those parts came in over the week. So we're going to continue on replacing the electrolytic capacitors, uh, which have all tested uh, bad for either ESR or capacitance, or they just, you know, the amp is what came out in '73. The amp is old as I am, so yeah, I need to have my capacitors changed, and uh, so does this amp. So anyway. We're going to continue on. We're going to place these electrolytic caps. And uh, after we're done with that, uh, well, I guess you'll have to wait and see. Because I'm not even sure what we're going to do after that. But anyway, here we go. Alrighty. First up on the chopping block are these three 1000 microfarad at 35 volt capacitors. And uh, I'll show you one quickly so you can see the process. And... Uh, See what happens. So we're going to clip 
the leads. You get out of the way. And very carefully remove it from the board. There's some uh, silicone or some other kind of junk attaching it there. Alrighty. And we're going to get our hot soldering iron and melt the solder on this side. And it's kind of a balancing act between, you want the, the solder, the old solder to be nice and hot before you start tugging on the, uh, the leg. Because you don't want to rip the pad out, but you also don't want to heat, overheat the board and cause damage that way. So it's kind of a balancing act. And there she goes. Oop. Come on. And I'm not going to try and force it out. Uh, because this is, if it's forced, you, you know, again, we really do not want to damage these traces. They seem very fragile, traces in the pads. So we want to be very careful with this. But uh, there's the leg. Can you see that? I can't see the viewfinder. No, you can't. There you are. And uh, I'll do the same thing with the other leg, but uh, for brevity purposes. We'll do this. And I have some braid, and I just took um, some flux with a Q-tip. Ew, there's a bunch of gunk in there. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, I took a little bit of flux and applied it to the braid with a Q-tip. And we're going to suck the old solder off. That's right! It's the office downsizing game from Spin Master. Getting all this. Uh, where's that leg? So it's this spot right here. And there you go. Uh oh. Falling apart. Yeah, that looks good. All right, we're gonna do that to the other leg and uh, the other capacitors, and then uh, we'll insert some capacitors and uh, do the process in reverse. Stay tuned. This capacitor here, this uh, 1000 micro at 50 volt uh, Sprague Atom, actually uh, tested really good on the ESR meter, but um, it's just starting to bulge. That's right. Here, so, uh, yeah, unfortunately, her useful life is just about over. So, had to go. And then, finally, we're going to get the uh, isopropyl alcohol out. And we got a little bit of uh, alcohol on a Q-tip. And uh, just go in there and clean all the old flux and gunk from around the areas from which we just desoldered. And, uh, yeah, there you go. You see that? Got some spunk on there. Probably not. Anyway, so that should be uh, ready to accept the new capacitors. Okay, now it's tool time with uh, Tim the Tone Priest Taylor. Ah, ah, ah. If you go to Harbor Freight Tools, um, they have an inexpensive kit of pliers. These guys here, it's a five-pack, I believe. And um, get you nice long nose pliers. Very handy. And then our regular nose pliers. Um, side cutters. Um, these, I only use these for like cutting guitar strings. Um, when doing electronics work, um, go out and spend the money on a nice set of uh, flush side cutting pliers uh, with hardened steel jaws. They're only like eight bucks. You can find them online. Uh, anyway, we get our uh, angled nose pliers. And we got this guy here. It's got a nice big wide um, set of jaws. Um, there's no like little grooves on the inside. And what I use these for oftentimes is to uh, straighten out the, uh, the legs of components. All right, which is hard to do with an amp in front of you trying to aim for a camera viewfinder. But anyway, 
there you go. Make it nice and straight. And then um, if you go to uh, your big box store of choice in the craft section, get yourself a pair of these. These are uh, round nose pliers. And this is what I use to bend, make a nice smooth round radius bend on the legs. Alrighty, good stuff. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to bend these at the appropriate lengths so it'll slide right into the uh, holes in the circuit board. There's the bends I made with my uh, round nose pliers. Now we're going to stick it into the board. Being mindful of polarity. And on the other side, what's going on here? Nope, got wires in the way. On the other side, we're going to bend the legs to give it mechanical support, and we're going to bend them following the trace on the board. And we're going to clip them short. We just want to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a hook, maybe a couple of millimeters or an eighth of an inch. And uh, so it'll be nice and secure in there, even without solder. And then we're going to solder it up and uh, call her done. All right. So this is the. Uh, capacitor we're working on here. This is the solder we're using today. Uh, I'm not making any recommendations on what anyone else should use, but I use leaded solder exclusively. Um, this is 63% tin, 37% lead. And we'll get ourselves a nice little bit. Uh, when working on amplifiers, I use, I believe this is one millimeter. Yeah, one millimeter diameter. When I'm doing uh, like effects pedals, I use a 0.3 millimeter. All right. So as discussed, we have our legs bent and clipped. And the legs are bent in the direction of travel of the trace. And let's do it. One. Here we go. Two. And then we'll give that a second to uh, freeze. And uh, yeah. Seems like a nice good connection. Just want to make sure we don't have a cold solder and that the solder looks good. It's nice and shiny. We have good adhesion to the circuit board. And this one is slightly questionable, but I think we're good. Yeah, we're good here. And then the top one's good. All right, there you go. That's the process. So I'm going to continue on doing that, and we'll check in uh, when I'm done. All right. I've got all the electrolytics that I'm going to replace replaced. So we got a couple here. We got this guy, these three, uh, that guy there, a couple over here, and on this other board, this guy here. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm not going to mess with this board just yet. I believe this is the board for the phase shifter. So we'll worry about him later. We'll see if we can't get this amp up and running uh, as it is. So I'm going to uh, reconnect all these wires and then I'm going to flip it over and we're going to change all the pots. Um, yeah, they're all really crunchy. Some, some more than others. Yeah, I don't think any amount of... Uh, Formula F5 is going to uh, help some of those those pots out. So I got all new pots. We're going to replace all the pots. Um, yeah, the sample is just filthy. Uh, I tried to clean up a lot of the uh, filth, but it looks like this thing was, you know, in a dust storm. Rolling around like a piece of tumbleweed in the good, the bad, and the ugly. But, uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So, again, we're going to uh, connect all our wires back to the boards, flip her over, change out the pots, and uh, hopefully fire her up and see where we're at. Okay, we have all the wires, uh, hopefully, reinstalled back in their proper places. Uh, I know a lot of people um, have a gripe about writing on the boards. Um... 
My thoughts on that are, uh, you know, this ain't a uh, Tweet Baseman or a Blackface Twin. And also, uh, it can easily be uh, removed with a little bit of alcohol. And uh, also, anything that uh, one can do to uh, not make a mistake or put a wire in backwards or a capacitor in backwards, uh, that's a, a net positive. Uh, a lot of times you can get, uh, you're thinking about a lot of things at the same time and could just make a careless mistake and you know that helps to avoid that but again this is a uh not a uh a tweed princeton so uh i think we're good but tong priest you have photographs and video of the amplifier you should uh, easily be able to reference where all the wires go uh that is absolutely true and photographs and video are you know essential part of doing this kind of work but again you can look at your uh, photo or your video and then come back over here on the board and uh, make a careless mistake or a little bit of an error, which can have uh, dire consequences. But if you've got, you know, a plus sign right over the uh, hole for the capacitor, that's much more difficult to screw that up. But Tone Priest, you should be looking at the schematic and following the schematic. Well, schematics aren't always available. Um, the schematic for this amp, I believe, is not for this exact model. And uh, also, if anyone's ever worked on a uh, Gibson amplifier from the 60s, uh, yeah, good luck with your schematic. So again, I know it might offend some people, but uh, this is my amp. I can do with it whatever I want. And this is what I'm choosing to do. That's all I have to say about that. That's the right on, man. You said it all. So now what we're going to do, we're going to flip her over and uh, replace all the pots. All right, we've got her flipped over, and it's time to address all these crunchy pots. And I have opted for alpha pots. Um, not my first choice. But to uh, replace all these with uh, nice CTS pots would have been exorbitantly expensive. So uh, we're going to go with these. They'll be fine for now. Maybe in the future, uh, depending upon uh, things, uh, maybe we'll uh, give it an upgrade. But for now, this is what we're going with. All right, the first pot we're going to do is this guy here, which is the accent uh, knob for the phase shifter. And yeah, the shaft is bent. And it's like, yeah, this, this sucker's in rough shape. I don't know what the hell happened to this amplifier, but whatever it was, it wasn't good. You ready? There we go. One down and a bunch more to go. So I just brought the tone pad outside. And um, I usually sit on the uh, the wooden deck stairs and I'll, I'll put his little... Uh, leash thing it's one of those uh where you can walk as far away as he wants and it's it rolls out like a uh fishing rod and when i was putting it down i got a sliver right up in the corner here of my finger it's underneath my fingernail and underneath his skin and there was nothing sticking out so i had to do a little bit of surgery and i'm trying to get the sucker out now and of course uh you can imagine how uh 99.9 .9 rubbing alcohol uh feels on that Let's get this sucker out. This is definitely not going to improve my guitar playing. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Yikes. Does this got uh, the alcohol on it? Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. That feels amazing. Oh, yeah. Alright, we're out of the locker room, back in the game. Uh, this pot here was almost completely frozen. I did finally get it to uh, twist, but yeah, this sucker was frozen. So yeah, these definitely needed to uh, go. This is a uh, Audio 50K, and it is the Waveform Potentiometer. 
All right, I'm just about done with the pots here. I got a couple of little snafus here. Um, when I was making my shopping list, I was looking at the uh, chassis from this angle here, and there's one behind here. Right there, the uh, one of the volume knobs. So I didn't order one of those. And then one of the pots I received was uh, no good. Um, you go to turn the uh, the thing, it only turned like 10 degrees, and I was able to force it to get it to sort of feel like it was working right, but uh, put it on the multimeter, and it was just no good. So chucked that sucker out and uh, used one of the other ones here. So we're going to be one short there and one short there. But um, this pot here... This pot here and this pot down there are actually all seem to be in pretty good shape. So I guess we're going to leave them for now and uh, we can always change them later if we need to. But uh, yeah, here we go. We're almost ready to uh, throw some tubes in there and uh, connect it to the cabinet and see what she does. Here we are. We got the chassis on the chassis stand. Sort of. Uh, here's all the new work. All the new caps looking very nice. Very nice indeed. And we've got our tube socketed up. A couple of 6L6s and a 7025 for the phase inversion, I believe. Now I gotta figure out a way. I, I wanna be able to fire it up for the first time on the bench here, but um, this is from the output transformer. We have an RCA, and on the uh, inside of the cabinet, it's a uh, male RCA. So, um, I, I have a million RCA cables somewhere in the Tone Church, but, uh, I don't know. We'll figure something out. Bam. All right. I forgot we got this guy here. The external speaker jack. And, um, we've got the multimeter set up in, uh, beep mode. Uh, so what I did is just to make sure everything was, uh, connected and everything worked the way I thought it would, uh, Right now I got the one probe connected to the ground lug on the external speaker. And then we take our RCA for the uh, combo speaker setup. And we have continuity. And it's also the same on the, the hot um, tab there. What do you call that? Pin leg. Hot to hot. And there is no continuity between hot and ground. Or at least there isn't, you know, a dead short. So yeah, I'll hook this up to my uh, Univox 2x12 cap and uh, we'll flip the switch. So the cabinet is a 2x12. It's a measured 3.3 ohms of resistance. So um, being in parallel, they're 8 ohm speakers. So we're looking for 4 ohms, or the amp's looking for 4 ohms. Um, I'm measuring the resistance on my Univox 2x12. And this is looking like 16 ohms. I believe it was an 8 ohm cab. So I think um, one of those speakers was on the way out or it didn't sound healthy the last time I was using it. So either it, it shit the bed or, um, you know, it's old and hasn't been uh, looked at yet. Something came disconnected, but uh, that's fine. Uh, this will be good enough for now for our purposes just to give the, uh, the amplifier a load as we fire it up. Dialing her up, I have her... At about a little over 80 volts from the wall in the Variac. Uh, tubes seem to be... The pilot lights seem to be on. Let's see what we got. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about right there. Alright, we're still at 80 volts from the wall. It's pulling 3.9 or 390 milliamps at 26 watts. Uh, it'll probably, you know, being at such low voltage, it'll probably uh, sound a little funky, but uh, let's see what we got.
active EQ. I like it. <laughs> So far, so good. I don't see any smoke. I gave it the uh, smell test. Definitely passed the uh, phone interference near the circuit board test. Yeah, here we go. Someone's making a call. Cool. It's actually very, very quiet, which is cool, too. Everybody loves a quiet amp. Well, quiet from with extraneous noise. And, and, and the tongue pet loves it. Right? Yeah what I'm talking about. I was just looking at the uh, schematic to see what the 12AX7 does. Um, and it looks like it does a little bit of uh, preamplification and then phase inversion. But then I noticed that uh, these aren't 6L6s. These are 8417s. Uh, I had never heard of those before. General Electric. They bring good things to life. So let's uh, see what 8417s are all about. All right, so I have the data sheets pulled up. Um, on the left here, we have the 6L6. On the right, we have the 8417. Um, they both appear to be beam power tetrodes, where the uh, got one of the screens um, internally connected to the grid. So let's see here. First thing I noticed was um, the 8417 takes a shit ton of more heated current. So you definitely don't want to go sticking, you know, four of these into your uh, Fender Twin. That's for damn sure. Not without a transformer change. So uh, 8417 uh, is at 1600 milliamps and this guy here is somewhere 900 milliamps. So that's quite a bit more. What is that? 700? It's like, yeah, it's almost an additional tube. And then the other thing, big thing that I noticed was the, where's the max? Maximum plate voltage on the 6L6 is 500, 450 for triode, 500 for pentode, and over here, 660 volts max. So this sucker is a beast. So uh, do your own research. Uh, looks like to get a decent pair of... Um, Vintage tubes for this. It'll run you run you around 100, 150 bucks. But uh, what are these put out? <laughs> Maximum signal power output, 100 watts. Wow, that's ultra linear. Um, well, regardless, we're up there. We are up there. No wonder why it's so damn loud. All right, I'm going through uh, all the functionality of everything, the jacks, the uh, EQs, or what all the knobs do, and, uh, oh, check this out. works. I have no idea what the waveform does. I think that might be um, this knob here. I think it might have something to do with the... Uh, no, it has something to do with something. This is all the way up. Cool. And 
then we got this whole notch shift thing, which we'll play with once I get the knob back on there, the chassis back in the cab. Cool. That's uh, the reverbs all the way up. It's not the uh, strongest reverb in the world, but uh, with it all the way up, it's, it's very usable. so good I was getting a little bit of um snap crackle and pop yeah it seems to be affected by the master volume although it seems to have died away might be like plate resistors or uh, I'll go in and check to make sure there's no DC on the wrong side of the capacitors the little ones that we haven't changed or it just might be you know old crap in the tubes cooking off but uh yeah looking good I think we're almost ready to stick this back in the cab So I've been playing around with her for a little bit, and she sounds great. She's got a nice, full, even tone uh, across the uh, frequency spectrum, as it were. Uh, the static isn't too bad. Um, again, it's probably, you know, plate resistors, or maybe these carbon comps are about due to be changed. Um, but she sounds pretty good right now. Instead of... Um, tearing this all apart and then replacing those I'm gonna wait and hold off and just play with the amp for a little while and uh, see if anything else needs to be addressed as well that way you know I only have to tear all the boards out one more time instead of doing it multiple times but what I am gonna do is replace the uh, screen resistors because that's pretty much just like scheduled maintenance you know like doing an oil change on your car so I'm gonna do that and then we'll pop her back into her cab Hook her up to the uh, speaker she wants to be hooked up to and uh, see how she sounds. Stay tuned. Well, here's a real humdinger. These uh, resistors here for the screens, we got brown, black, brown, gold. And according to my calculator, those are 100 ohm resistors. Schematic is calling for 1K. And... If we were to look at it like a basement, it's uh, 1 point, uh, where are we at here, 1.5k, so, yeah, Leo's using 1.5, the schematic calls for 1k, and uh, there's 100 ohm resistors installed. Um, I think these may have been replaced, I don't think those are original, because if we look at the shape of those compared to how the other resistors look, they don't look like the same brand or manufacturer. So, I think I'm going to uh, whip those out and we'll put in 1Ks. We'll follow the schematic. All right, here's the back side of the uh, cabinet with the chassis newly installed. There's those big old tubes. And here's the speakers. Um, I believe they're roller and or celestian roller, roller celestian, whatever it is. It's hard to see, especially you're not going to be able to see it on camera probably, but... Um, the date code is 285-7443, so that's 43rd week of 1974, uh, 285 being Rolla. So there you go. Let me get some, uh... oh yeah, camera work is superb here. And the Oscar goes to... Um, got some big old magnets on there. So there you go. All right, I'm going to hook uh, this all up, hook the reverb tank up, uh, temporarily anyway, and uh, we'll give her a whirl. All right, there she is with her knobs all connected. Um, when I bought it, it was missing, you know, a knob and a half. I don't think I'll be able to find replacements that match, but I think the knobs I took off of the uh, Fender um, Bandmaster that I did, they're like silver with the black handles. Those will, uh, those will blend in nicely. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, well, yeah, the knobs probably in this layout. Probably has a lot to do with why Retchul uh, said this is the weirdest amp he's ever played. This yeah. thing is rad. Um. Yeah, look at that. That's boss right there. 
All right, so let's uh, plug her in to get some electrons into her, and we'll see how she sounds uh, all put back together. And uh, oh, I got a uh, nice handle for her too. That when we revisit this sucker, we'll put that on there, and that'll be pretty nice. So yeah, let's give her a whirl. This uh. is wild looking. Neighbors picking up their phone to call the cops, I think, so maybe interrupted. Alright, let's try the fun channel. shifter it's coming up we'll be seeing you over in uh, at Wembley <laughs> all right let's try this thing 
blown away by the uh the gain uh channel of this amp but the cream channel the uh possibilities are endless that just sounds great beautiful cleans. This would be a great pedal platform, as they say.
you go. That's about all I got in me today. It's been a long day working on this sucker, and um, I'm going to want to mic it up and do some kind of recording projects. We'll get Grim Death and the Seven Semis down here into the Tone Church, and uh, we'll do a, a couple of recording projects with this sucker. But uh, there she is. Ooh, look at that. Nice. There she is. She's all running again. Um, she's got the easy bake oven knobs on there and everything. She ain't so weird after all. Rad. But uh, we're going to call this one a success. She's not completely done, but uh, we'll play with her for a little bit and uh, we'll have some fun, as we always try to do. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Done! <laughs>